peace and blessings be upon our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may I refer to the letter of invitation for the personal presence of His Highness, the Emir of Kano, Muhammad Sunusi the second CON as keynote speaker of the occasion to thank you very much for extending this invitation to him. However, I would like to express the concern of His Highness Muhammad Sunusi, the second CON, over his inability to grace this occasion personally as a result of previous engagement and has mandated me to represent him to deliver his keynote address, which reads, I am particularly honored to be given this opportunity to speak on the role of traditional and religious leaders in community healthcare under the theme universal health care coverage, prospect, and challenges. No, no doubt the most celebrated efforts of government in the attainment of universal health care coverage is cognizance with the continued uh, quest by our communities of accessible, affordable, and qualitative health care services. We are all aware, we are all not unaware of the current inadequate health care coverage, especially that of maternal, childhood mortality, skilled birth attendants, unmet need of family planning, among others, have continued to show how far we are from achieving our goals and objective, particularly in the northern part of Nigeria. It is also important to note that the Nigeria National Policy on Health has at its goal to provide adequate access to primary, secondary, and tertiary healthcare services for the entire Nigerian population based on principle of social justice, equity, and the ideals of freedom and opportunity upon in the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria uh, basic rights. However, as we approach our target and objective, we started to evaluate our achievement and make adjustments where necessary. While many substantial successes have been recorded, some challenges still remain which must be addressed to achieve our target. Kano State shares such problem of having the highest population in the country and the lowest number of health workers. Consequently, we had a discussion with the Ministry of Health on the need for the Emirate Council to provide support and collaboration with government in community mobilization on primary health care issues. This development serve as impetus for strategic community engagement under the traditional leadership structure for improved healthcare services. We therefore promulgated the Kano Emirate Council Committee on Health to work on these challenges. In light of this contest, government and our development partners have always considered the traditional and religious leaders as primary agent for community mobilization in all development programs. Traditional and religious leaders have been involved as a gate, as gatekeepers in various community-oriented programs, ranging from immunization, control of communicable diseases, maternal and child health, eradication of diseases, and so on. In other words, our government have recognized the important role of traditional religious leaders, and it is on record that the recent gains in achieving the interruption and polymetrics hold much credit to coordinated role of 
traditional and religious leaders under his eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, through the Northern Traditional Rulers Committee on Health, we would like to state that anybody coming into this country to eradicate polio and indeed all communicable diseases and non-communicable diseases must come through the traditional institution as driving vehicle to success. In this regard, we in Kano have established a standing committee on health under the Emirate Council that work in the area of improving uptake of routine immunization, maternal and child health care, environmental sanitation, and girl child education. Lower level committees were also established at district, villages, wards using the emirate and community structure in line with the hierarchy of traditional system. The world level committee, Comworks, is the basic operational level of this important initiative. It comprises of key traditional stakeholders and other influential people in the community. This lower level committee engage with the communities through tracking of newborns, requiring of routine immunization, and antenatal care, recording of maternal and child deaths. Various training have been conducted for these committees on this important work and how to institute evidence-based local action. Similarly, there is a strong monitoring and evaluation system that entail collection of data and reporting across the various levels of Emirates monitored by districts, village, and ward heads. We are happy to say that this laudable initiative has been recognized by the National Council on Health meeting as an important tool for strengthening community engagement. The new leadership of the National Healthcare Development Agency, I am glad to note that to note has also adopted this as a unified approach for strengthening community engagement for routine immunization and primary health care. At this juncture, I like to state that while traditional and religious leaders are coordinating with communities for improved uptake of services, our government should be more agile on their responsibility in meeting of the ever-rising demand for services at all times. We are not unaware of the doubting challenges in human resources for healthcare, infrastructure, finances, among others. We are now building on this course by promoting linkage of our committees with the health workers, particularly at, faci at facility level, to ensure effectiveness of services and synergy for sustainable health care delivery. We are aware of various efforts being made by government and development partners in the health sector, such, such as Gate Foundation, Langote Foundation, CHAI, EUSGIN, UNFPA, Chigari Foundation, DRPC, among others, we are indeed grateful. We would like to express our profound gratitude to the organizers of this dialogue, who as media organ has an important role to play in providing avenue for experience sharing and adoption of best practices. Thank you very much, and God bless. Salam. Thank you, Malam Umar, for standing in for His Royal Highness. And I think more than anything else, we have been assured that indeed we need to carry along our traditional and religious leaders 
to ensure that indeed, as we pursue the dream of universal health coverage, once again, please can we warmly appreciate the representative of His Royal Highness for coming in here. Our next speaker had to jettison every other thing he's doing today to be here with us, not just because he holds an office as the number one health administrator for the country, but the fact that he believes that we should start looking inwards for us to be able to create an environment for affordable, quality, accessible healthcare delivery service in Nigeria. And so to speak, may I on your behalf, Your Excellency here, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, invite the Honorable Minister of Health, Professor Isaac F. Adewali, to address us. Thank you so much, Muji. Your Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, ably represented by DGVON, His Highness, the Emir of Kano, Muhammad Zanusi II, dignitaries are present. I want to recognize the executive director of the National Primary Care Development Agency, the DG of NACA, acting executive secretary of NHIS, the High Commissioner, the organizers. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me express my delight being here today. And I'm also particularly thrilled because of the high quality representation that we have today. When I'm in an audience and I could recognize leaders of development partners and international agencies, I'm thrilled because of the, their contribution to that sector. Let me also appreciate the president of Sogon for being here. Um, when we're talking about maternal mortality, we have to talk of him. And then my sister who is leading the MNCH2 project in the Northwest, Dr. Kolo, Commissioner Nasarawa, and many of you, let me just say I'm very grateful that you are here today. I'm supposed to give um, some remarks, and um, it's important to really make some disclosure quickly. Up front, Dr. Paul said there is an interlink between health, well-being, and socioeconomic development. Nothing can be far from that. Many countries that have recorded significant improvement in socioeconomic status and prior improvement in their health indicators. So that's correct. Secondly, health is a basic human right. That is not in dispute. In fact, what is unique about the current administration under President Muhammad Dubuari is that all we are talking about is enshrined in the manifesto of the APC. When we talk about quality care, accessible care, affordable care, we're talking about universal coverage, and that is in the APC manifesto. And I, I stand to be corrected that that's the first time in the history of this country that a party deliberately inserted a current topical issue as a manifesto of the party. And the current DG of the WHO has made UHC a key agenda. So it's like keying into the, our own agenda. But then, let me say up front again, that UHC is not a destination, it's a journey. And we're starting. When at least 80% of our people are able to access quality, affordable care within a short distance from where they live, then we we'll say we are there. And it's, it's an aspiration for all of us. I must also say clearly that health is not a responsibility of the federal government of Nigeria. The Minister of Health drives the agenda, is in charge of policy. But the actual implementation resides with my brothers, sisters at the state level and local government. And that's where the media must hold 
not just the Honorable Minister of Health accountable, but all the commissioners of health across the country. We are equally liable. We must be made accountable to the Nigerian people. So Health Commissioner Nasarawa State should also be held accountable. <laughs> when somebody needs treatment in Nasarawa State, when there is a road traffic accident, when there is an outbreak of Lassa fever in Lassarawa State, when people cannot get HIV medication, hold him accountable. When he cannot do his job, report him to me. But what we do here is that we call on the minister to take care of, when there is a commissioner, that is actually an infringement of his duty. And I don't want to be accused of actually infringing on his right and duty. So, honorable commissioner, I'm sorry if I've refused to infringe on your right. If I've done it in the past, it's not deliberate. But we must work together. And the same message will go to all the commissioners. We must work together to deliver to our people. Our people are expectant. They are waiting for us. We should do it yesterday. But if we cannot do it yesterday, let's do it today. So it's, it's a common, and that's where the media comes in. We need to work together. Now to where I'm here, my presentations, please, quickly. I will run through them, give you a background. Next slide, please. Next slide. And in the last 24 hours, we've been treated to a lot of postings and so on. Universal coverage is a healthcare system which provides health care and financial protection to all citizens. That is correct, not in doubt. And the Nigeria is yet to become health is yet to become a national priority. I beg to disagree. It is a priority, but we are not there fully. Let me say clearly that Bauchi State is a state that should be commended. Bauchi is spending 16% of its state budget on health. And that to me is, is co worth commending. So it is not all gloom. Some states are doing well. Kaduna State has rehabilitated 255 PACs. That state should be commended. <laughs> so when we are talking about health, we, there, there are good stories all over that we need to, to project and tell people to replicate. In 2013 alone, Indian granted medical visas to 40,000 Nigerian patients. Have, that's just part of it. Many people went to South Africa, Egypt, Europe, USA. But it is a cardinal objective and aspiration of this administration to reverse this. We want to ensure that people stay here. And much more importantly, we want to attract them. There is no reason why Nigerians should go to Ghana to reduce, re receive radiotherapy for $10,000 when we can do it here. So we're working on it. And in the course of my presentation, I will also tell you what we're doing. It is not like day and night. Because what Nigerians want is, is there. But I can assure you, we, we have milestones. And we're hoping that in the next 18 months, certain things will become visible to Nigerians. Next slide. This dialogue is timely. And I want to thank the organizers for inviting us to be part of it. You are speaking for us, you are fighting for us, and I say thank you. Next slide. And I said Nigerian is a federation of 36 states. And many people say that it is more than one country. Next slide. Over 180 million people, the most populous. In Africa, one out of four, five Africans is a Nigerian. In West Africa, we're about 50% of the population. So it's a huge country with tremendous potential. Next slide. But then when you look at it, if we do nothing, by 2050, we'll become the third or fourth most populous country. And we can't afford that. Nigeria is just a little bit bigger than Texas and Georgia put together. But when we then, we are number nine, 10 now. If we do nothing by 2050, we'll become third or fourth. Our land size has not increased, but our population has increased. And this is simply not sustainable. Next slide. We also need to do a few things about our total fertility rate. And what is also worrisome, average of about 5.7. Um, the lowest is in southwest with 4.6. But what we want to see is that even Nigerian men want more children than their women. And the president of Sogon should ask our men why. And jokingly at the presentation, I said it's because men don't carry pregnancies. 
Because they don't carry pregnancies. They don't know what it takes to carry a pregnancy for nine months. When you cannot, it's like carrying a load and you can't even put it down for one hour. Nine months. And yet the man says, give me more children. So I, I think um, there must be a way to reverse it so that a man can carry it occasionally. Next slide. We've also spoken about the, the mortality for the children. Um, this is not good enough. We're working on it. What we also know is that when mothers die, the children are also likely to die. So there is a high probability that when a mother dies after delivery, that child is not likely to survive. So there is a linkage between high maternal mortality and high infant mortality. Next slide. We also need to drive this board. When you look in the 60s, when you look at Indonesia, Thailand, and Nigeria, the, the pyramid looks alike. But over the years, these two countries, Indonesia and Thailand, they've been able to increase their budget at the mid part to produce productive workers. But what have we done in Nigeria? We keep on producing babies, and that budget is at the lower part. So what we need to do as a country is to change this budget so that Nigeria will have more workers than dependents. About 70% of our people are under the age of 30. So we must change the population pyramid of Nigeria. Next slide. Next slide. What do we know about the health sector? I don't have to repeat all over again. There are things you know already. Um, saying it will be like just repeating the same song. I maternal mortality, I infant mortality, a healthcare system that no people really, they are suspicious about. And then we also, they don't go there. So what we want to do next slide is to reverse all of this. But to do so, we must also look at a disease body. I'm sorry about the quality of the slide. I think it's due to the projection on the background. But I think I'll speak to many of them. We have a huge body of communicable diseases. But as our life expectancy increases, we will begin to experience more of the non-communicable diseases as we move from our air-conditioned houses we move into air-conditioned cars, air-conditioned offices. We spend most of our time sitting. Um, that, that, that was a beautiful video clip I received. Someone put a chair and said, put burger on it, tobacco, and a few things, and said, what's the most dangerous? I said, people who put point at the tobacco, point at the hamburger, and many others, said, no, but the most dangerous is the seat. Many of us sit from toilet to the dining table to the office, and we spend almost all day sitting. He said, but half of your body is your leg, lower limb, and God has created you to start walking around. So please do more of walking so that we can actually reduce the burden of the non-communicable diseases. As we grow older, there will be more cancers. Cancers occur more with older people. So we need to look into all of this. Next slide. And so I also tell you that it is not all worse. We've done well, we're reducing infant mortality, but we can do better to make sure that our infant mortality is single digit. We also need to reduce the maternal mortality. Our maternal mortality is in the bracket of countries like Afghanistan, Syria alone, and South Sudan. We need to change this. Currently, we are working on six states in the country with the worst maternal mortality indicators. And these six states are Sokoto, Kebi, Jigawa, Zamfara, Katsina, and Yobe. When you look at the ski bath attendance for these six states, it's under 10%. Compared to 78% for a state like Oyo State. Kaduna is the highest, I think about 30%. But we need to move our people to delivery. Our women must deliver in facility under supervision. The days are gone when someone will say, look, goats deliver without supervision. We are not goats. We must deliver under supervision, or that the leaves drop without trauma. We are not leaves. So we need to ensure that our women deliver under supervision. And this was, then we need to take care of the poor. Next slide. And that is why this government is distinctly pro-poor. When you look at the indicators, the blue bars represent the indicators for wealthy people. And it's like the indicators in Europe, USA. The real problem is the red, poor people. When you look at those who did not receive antenatal care, the poor people. When you look at those who did not take family plan, poor people. 
when you look at those who did not vaccinate their children, poor people. So we need programs. And that's why this administration is investing in poor people. When we invest in poor people, the narrative will change. Next slide. And that is also looking at the, uh, some of these things I've talking about. All of them are not where we should raise the bar. Next slide. And also, next slide, next slide. And also make sure that we improve on the performance of the region. This is breaking performance. Not yet, not yet. Breaking them into, when you look at the top bars, actually will be southwest and southeast. Followed by south-south, and the blue is north central. When you look at northeast and northwest, they are not where they should be. And that's why deliberately, we are investing more in northeast and northwest. Because if we fail to invest in these two regions, the entire national picture will remain very poor. And so we need to lift up northeast, northwest to where the other states are. Next slide. We also need to change the, the, the functionality of our healthcare pyramid. What happens today, which I've said many times, is that the lower one is the tertiary care. What Nigerians do today, when they have a dick, they go to national hospital. When they have fever and vomit, they go to national hospital. That's not where they should go to. They should go to a primary health care. But unfortunately, the primary health care belongs to the states and local government. We own the tertiary care. The top brains, all the high-level people are in the tertiary care. But their job is not to look after diarrhea and vomit. Their job is to look after complex cases. The cancers, the kidney problems, the cardiac problems, the complex abdominal masses, things that even the ordinary doctor in the PhD or secondary cannot even understand. That's the job of the specialist. But today they are overwhelmed and we complain, they complain. What we want to do is to reverse this pyramid, work with the states and say, look, put in place your primary care. Let 70% of Nigerians go there. 20% will go to the general hospitals and 10% will go to our teaching hospitals. When you walk in there, they are waiting for you. The doctor then specialist can spend one hour looking after you. Not just saying what is wrong and the next thing is somebody is writing a prescription because there are 200 people waiting outside. So this is a job what we have to do it jointly with the states. And also, next slide, is to change where does the money go to. Currently, a lot of the money is to pay salaries. And no country will develop where a large of the resource allocation is for paying salaries. There is nothing going into capital allocation. When you look at the local government these days, the third bar there is capital allocation. When you look at it, it is so small, almost for the local government, there is nothing on capital. So we need to change where does this money go to. And move Nigeria from this side to that side. Where we will improve the quality of our investment. Next slide. And then look at other things. Health alone is beyond just medicine, commodities. And we need to provide electricity. We need to provide roads. There must be water. So these other structures are relevant. Next slide. We also need to ensure that we move Nigeria to perform better than Kenya, Senegal, Tanzania, and Uganda. Many of these countries that are far poorer than us are doing better. So we need to really work well to make sure that we get value for money and ensure that things work well. Next slide. And now to talk about so what main mention I think is that po about the pocket uh, out of pocket expenditure. We found health system through two main ways. We either do general taxation because when you say health is free, somebody is paying, and that is the truth. Nigerians must tell themselves. In UK, they fund the healthcare system through taxation. When you are in the high income bracket in UK, you, your tax might be up to sixty percent of your income. And they are using that to fund the tax. It's not just free. Somebody is paying. Even in free town, somebody is paying. There is nothing free there. Or in some other countries, like Germany and so on, it is insurance. So we need to, de this dialogue should also come out with clear core recommendations. How do we want to fund health? Somebody must pay for it. We can't just sit back and say it is free. Oh, it is free. Who is paying for it? And this is where this is important. In many of the countries, there is clear cut funding structure and people are investing in it. Next slide. 
Next slide. And to tell you that whatever we are seeing here is in conformity with the vision of Mr. President. That health, which Dr. Paul said, a healthy nation is a wealthy nation. Mr. President is saying that already. That health is a human right issue. We agree with you. That is our objective and philosophy. That's what we want. And that access to health must be universal. is in the APC manifesto. So we are speaking the same language. Where we need to go come together is how do we get there? And we must do it together. Next slide. And I said that we want to make sure that their facilities are fine. We want to make sure that our children get immunization, our babies survive, our children grow, and that we don't have to suffer. People we complain quite often that Nigerians go late to hospitals. Those with cancers go there late. It's because of poverty. When people have fever and headache and they are fasting, something is wrong. Because what they should do is go to a facility, check their blood, whether it is malaria, and treat them. But when somebody has a problem and is fasting and praying, something is wrong. So poverty, there are other things you should pray for. Not fever and headache. So we need to make sure that we take quite a number of our people out of poverty. Next slide. And then make sure that the air care system is responsive. We ensure equity. We have improved outcomes. And we, uh, within this circle, then we'll say that we are there in terms of achieving universal recovery. Next slide. And we must also key into the new vision of the SDG, having a system-wide reform for the country and making sure that we look at the system from a multi-sectoral lens and ensure that we deliver to our people and that our programs are all integrated. The woman taking delivery of the pregnant woman can also immunize the baby. That same woman can treat malaria. So it must be an integrated system that work together. And this is what we need for our country. The Air Act, next slide. The Air Act has the following provisions. But unfortunately, we only talk about the 1%. I want to say clearly here that we have started the implementation of the Air Act. The only thing left is the implementation of the funding mechanism, which we need. And we're asking you to join us in asking for it. Next slide. We also want to change the way we do business. We want to ensure that we leverage on existing structure. We put in more money. We work together in order to reduce out-of-pocket expenses, in order to promote equity, in order to ensure that we change the health seeking behavior of our people. So that when you are ill, you can easily walk and say, please check my blood pressure. I didn't sleep well last night. Oh, I woke up with headache this morning. Can you help me check my blood pressure? And many things can be easily solved by improving on our seeking behavior. And I do tell people, treat yourself the way you treat your cars. When you wake up in the morning, you clean your car, you check the brake fluid, you check the radiator level, you do many things. If you kickstart the engine and there is an unusual noise, you drive to Uncle John, Mohammed, or whatever the mechanic is. When it is health, when people wake up with fever and headache, they say, I reject it. Or, 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 they, or they just put rub and put rub on their forehead and be managed. You don't, we have not done that to your car. Why are you doing it to your body? Some people are trained to look after your body. See them. Next slide. And then that is the way the 100% will be shared. 50% um, of it will be given for basic care care provision fund at primary and secondary level. So the basic beneficiaries are actually the states and the people of the country. And then 45% will go for commodities, improving the air care system. This is the first time that we are allocating money to maintaining the air system infrastructure, and then 5% for emergencies. Things we did not plan for. The accidents, whether public health accident or public health emergencies, 5% of this money will go for it. Next slide. And then we will also look at legislation to ensure that we maintain standards. We've set up all the committees that we do this. We have a committee that will maintain standards in tertiary care. So that is to tell you that we've started implementation. We have a committee that will look into ethics a committee that will promote health research. All of them, we've said them all. A committee that will look into essential drug formulary. What are the essential drugs? 
And I've also, because of the powers conferred on the minister in the act, also prescribed what will be the basic air care package for Nigeria. And we are saying treat malaria. Take care of the pregnant woman. Take care of simple women like diarrhea and vomiting. Give vaccination. When we can do all these simple, simple things, then we've taken care of the majority of the reasons why our people go to hospital. Next slide. And change the current situation. Where we focus on input, and we focus more on outcomes, outputs, and we also ensure, as I've said, integration, and focus on primary care. This administration is committed not only as a policy, we are providing the lead that the way to go is to reestablish the primary care system. It's the foundation. You cannot have a good wall or a good roof without a good foundation. And that's why our emphasis is on primary care. And I want to thank the executive director who has taken this on as a major issue and is actually not running, is flying with the idea. So I want to thank you for keying into this. <laughs> Next slide. And then we also need to change the perception of the health sector. We are trying to do that. The health is very critical. Health is not a waste. And I'm happy that um, the vice president is here represented. When you invest one dollar in health, you get in infrastructure, you get three dollars. When you invest one dollar in immunization, the return is sixteen dollars. You can calculate how many times. When you invest one dollar in TB program, the return is eighty-five dollars. When you invest one dollar in family planning, the return on investment is about one twenty dollars. So when you put money in health, Mr. Vice President, ably represented, you get more return. So put more money in health. And all of you, please join us to advocate for more resources for health. Next slide. As I've said earlier on, we need to grow that small blue there. That is the capital expenditure. Almost all our money is going for salaries. But we need to put more money in infrastructure. We need to really reduce the amount of money. And that's when one people say, oh, we employ more people. I say, no, we can't employ more people into a tertiary system. What we need to do is put more money in drugs, rehabilitate the system, so that our people will have it. Not that we should put more people. When we put more people there and nobody is going in there, it's a waste. Next slide. And that's what we seek to have. At the center, there is a top grade tertiary system, the PAC, and with a referral system was built. During one of the presentations, maybe it's by that I couldn't remember, someone said there are so many PACs. Many of them are not. Yeah, that's correct. We have about 30,000 PCs at the last camp. About 20% of them are working. But what we are saying is that if we can make 10,000 work, and that's how we came about with the concept of 10,000 revitalized PCs across the country, that 10,000 will be on the basis of one PAC per political ward. There are about 10,000 people in each ward. If we can make that work, we will provide care to at least 100 million people. And that is the vision of this administration. But it is not the vision of federal government. It is a national vision. We need to work with the states and want to work with local government to get it done. And that's why we're happy with Kaduna State that did 255. There are 255 political wars in Kaduna State. The governor has rehabilitated all the 255 and told me that he's ready to do more. So many of our governors should also copy this government. At the last count, Niger has done 40. And pr the governor promised me we'll do more. We are doing one per senatorial district as of 2016. In 2017, we are looking forward to doing about 1,000. Because that 10,000 is not just federal, it's national. And we are not building new build, uh, structures. We are just putting in, making sure it's fit for use, putting light, water, and the essential infrastructure. That's what the rehabilitation is. So we are not starting anything new. Apart from Bornu, part of Adamawa and Yobe, where the structures have been destroyed by the insurgents. So essentially, we are not building. We are putting them to function. Please move on. And that's why we end up having a well-organized structure, right from the world level to local government to state, and then you move on to federal. Fortunately, each state in this country has a federal institution. And that federal institution is either a teaching hospital 
or a medical center. And their job is to make sure that we provide quality care that ca for cases that cannot be managed at the primary or secondary. They are not to receive primary. They are not to receive people walking and say, I have a skin rash. That's not what the general teaching hospitals are meant for. We don't want skin rashes to go there. It is only a skin rash that cannot be managed yes, we are. Yes, let it go there. And then for us in the ministry, the concept, next slide, the concept of this, we also have some signature projects. We want to make sure that we crash our maternal mortality rate. We want to make sure we crash our infant mortality rate. We also want to ensure that we eliminate mother-to-child transmission of HIV, which the DG of NACA has taken on as a key issue. We also want to undo the issue of cancer. We have a program where for you to fly a corpse back to Nigeria, you must get a waiver from the minister. And since I became minister, I've been documenting why do we lose them. 50% of those who die outside this country die from cancer. And that's why we have made cancer a key program. And we are working hard on it. And in our 2017 budget, there is a program there. We call it Strategic Partnership with the Nigerian Sovereign Wealth Investment Authority. We voted money there. We, we partner with NSIA to build capacity for cancer. And we are hoping that in the next 18 months, we will make sure that at least seven centers, one in a geopolitical zone, has ability to...